our world is one that's ever changing. And it's thanks to this change that it gave us a chance as a species to evolve amongst the other primates of the world. This gave us hope for evolution through sacrifice, determination, perseverance, and technology. We've been able to evolve to who we are today. I'm Jason Munoz, and this is AnthroQuest. Planet Earth, our home. So far, the only known place in the cosmos where sentient life can and does exist. Through scientific fields of study, such as anthropology, we begin to ask ourselves the hard questions. Who are we? Where do we come from? Are we related to modern day ape? And where does it all get explained? The answers are in the past. And so, our journey begins. Our world has seen its fair share of comets and catastrophic events within its history, but the one that stands out amongst the others is the one that killed the dinosaurs. Over 65 million years ago, dinosaurs were the ruling species of planet Earth. They thrived for millions of years, but in a blink of an eye, one comet just six miles in diameter changed the course of evolution on the planet forever. The comet's impact brought waves of devastation. Those creatures that were closest to the impact were wiped out almost immediately. For others who were far away, they would have felt the destructive forces, such as earthquakes, tidal waves, and volcanoes. And for the creatures farthest away from the impact, they would suffer the longest. The smoke and ash that blanketed the atmosphere would shut out the sunlight for ages. Temperatures would cool, plants would die, and so then did the giant reptiles of the world. As the crustaceous period came to a close and the largest creatures were nearly extinct, so then did the tertiary period bring opportunity for smaller creatures, such as mammals, to thrive and reproduce. New creatures, called primates, began their journey through an evolutionary chain. It was through their large brain capacity and brachiary abilities to climb trees that allowed them to create habitats and learn complex skills. Over the course of millions of years, these primates continue adapting to their abilities within the environment and their traits genetically. Through the use of their opposable thumbs and large brain capacity, primates flourished into various populations of highly skilled species. Within these species, we begin to see the traces of early hominins. But how do we know what connects us to the primates of ancient Earth? Scientists have calculated that we as human beings are at least 98% genetically similar to modern day chimpanzees. By understanding the development of early man, we can begin tracing the roots of our past. With scientific methods such as dating techniques, we can study how old a primitive population existed learn how they evolved through physical and genetic variations, and study their remains to understand how they lived out their lives, reproduced to increase the populace, survived environmental conditions, predators, and territorial conflicts, learned how to make tools, and the creation of culture. We will also look into bipedal features and brachiating abilities, compare the cranial capacity and the progression of smaller teeth, and decipher the evidence of language and tool use. And thus we begin with the hominins. In the desert sands of Chad, in Central Africa, we find one of our first family ancestors, Sahelanthropus chadenis. Over six to seven million years ago, they are considered to be one of the earliest known distinctions during the divergence of chimpanzee and man. We are aware of their existence simply from one fossilized skull nicknamed Talme, meaning hope of life. 
Though little is known of their species, it is believed that they were mostly still ape-like in appearance, with their robust skull and heavy brow ridge. Still, their large cranial capacity was larger than the other apes at the time, and when closely examined, we notice their small canine teeth. Just one of the many traits we'll begin to see in modern day man. Kenya, Africa, six million years ago, a roaring to Guinness, the original hillbilly, as they say, known as a millennium man. 13 fossils have been discovered through potassium argon dating technique. These fossils show us evidence of possible bipedalism. The term bipedal meaning on two feet. The spine would begin to show signs of curving in two areas and the pelvis was more bowl shaped, allowing for the body to stay more centered. Though no cranial fossils have been found thus far, we can see that their arms were long for brachiating to remain in the trees, but there was greater support on the knees, allowing at times for walking upright. In the grasslands of Ethiopia, we find Ardipithecus ramidus, pith meaning ape-like, dating back almost 5.8 million years ago. Through potassium argon dating, we again see the evidence of bipedalism through the pelvis and the legs. This was still the early stages of a bipedal species. Therefore, they were less likely to be in the trees. Their hand grip was weak, and they spent more time walking, but no running yet. Through the cranial fossils, we can see the primitive canine teeth, and by studying the 60 or so fossils discovered, we can see that this species lived in large groups. In East Africa, we find Australopithecus afarensis, dating back 4 million years ago. After finding many individual fossils, we are able to decipher a distinct difference in shape and size of both the males and the females. This is known as sexual dimorphism. The male's cranial size and prognatic facial feature is much larger than the female's, or Lucy, as a well-known fossil has been called. With a perfectly bull-shaped pelvis and a bipedal femur, this species was clearly made for walking. Another distinct trait is the afferandus, or inline big toe, which is moved forward similar to today's modern man. Thanks to the preservation of multiple indentations found in fossilized ash known as the footprints of Laetoli, we now have a better understanding of how the species walked upright, and we start to hypothesize about the beginning of family culture. In 1924, an anthropologist by the name of Raymond Dart discovered by chance the first ever ape-like fossil. The discovery of this fossil, known as the Tong Child, led to new human origin theories of its time. This fossil is unique and one of a kind. Part of the brain was still attached, petrified through limestone fossilization, a benefit from the limestone caverns found in South Africa. However, because limestone is hard and dry material, we cannot use the potassium argon dating methods in this region. Instead, archaeologists use the paleomagnetism dating method by studying the Earth's magnetic field in archaeological finds. Australopithecus africanus, or the South African ape, dating back three million years ago. We find that this species is much closer in traits to humans than those of the past. Their facial features were prognathous, they had a high cranial vault used for better motor function, and their fingers and toes were a bit longer and curved. Although this species had their shoulders for brachiating, there were still signs of full bipedalism. They were comfortable in the trees, but were able to walk on the ground. Africanus learned how to fend off large predators, such as the leopards and the birds of prey. Evidence shows that they were an osteodontocaratic group, which means they developed ways to use everyday things such as rocks, bones, teeth, and horn as useful basic tools. Perhaps it was because of their power grip. 
the ability to hold and grip with great strength. In the Sweetwell area of Africa, we also find Australopithecus sediba, the southern ape of Sweetwell, dating back about 2 million years ago, quite similar to Australopithecus africanus, yet considered to be a later form of the species. They still had tree climbing abilities, but their brain may have had better reorganization skills for more emotions and long-term planning abilities. Through his discovery, Raymond Dart proposed that bipedality had evolved in hominins before larger brains. Paranthropus boisei, dating back 2.3 million years, originally called Zinjanthropus boisei by its discoverers Mary and Louis Leakey in East Africa in 1959. Its name caused uproar in the scientific community for years, trying to categorize it in either the Paranthropus or Homo genus groups. Also known as the Nutcracker Man, another common misconception for their sagittal crest, large jaw, and giant molars. They were described to have big ugly heads with their heavy cheekbones, deep TMJ, and less prognathic facial features. This allowed them to have a strict vegetarian diet of eating hard roots and grass. There is not much difference from Paranthropus boisei found in East Africa compared to Paranthropus robustus found in South Africa. Both lived between 2.3 to 1 million years ago. Anthropologists use potassium argon to date fossils from East Africa, but again, due to the limestone rock of South Africa, they had to use paleomagnetism method and biostratigraphy for comparative dating. Paranthropus meaning alongside man, refers to our theory that this and other robustus australopithecine species are not a direct link to Homo sapiens, and thus modern-day man, but rather a branch of the hominini tree that happened to go extinct. Homo habilis, or the handyman dating back about 2.3 to 1.4 million years ago, the first known species to have migrated throughout the African continent. Homo habilis had to deal with many climate shifts due to the Ice Age during the Pleistocene period. With its full bipedal capabilities, Homo habilis appeared to have lost all its brachiating abilities. The other significant feature we come to find is the beginning stages of tool use. What may seem like minor chipped stones to the naked eye actually shows a different story under magnification. These stone tools were chipped away with precision and were made specifically for the right hand. This was because of the left brain right hand shift. We call this early stage in tool making the Ottawan tools. They were scavengers rather than hunters. Though their aptitude for tool making and great migration were ostentatious, there was still no evidence of a hyoid bone in the throat to detect language capability comparable to present day man. Homo erectus, the upright man, dating back about 1.8 million to 200,000 years ago. Known to be the first long distance runner with its high arched foot, it was also the first of the species to migrate out of Africa. Different variations occurred for different groups geographically. There were signs of sexual dimorphism and morphology, as the body size increased with heavy muscle tone and more neck muscles to balance the head while running. The cranium capacity increased and there was a distinct difference with a pinched occipital football-shaped skull. Presumed to have a hunter-gatherer diet, Homo erectus also showed signs of Acheulean tools, cooking with fire, the first drinking vessel, sewing needles, medicine, and the likelihood of art and culture. Homo heidelbergensis, dating back 850,000 to 125,000 years ago. Early archaic Homo sapiens, also the first true Europeans. Although there is a range of variations in species globally, we find that their bodies were more compact but less robust, with wider parenthals and smaller teeth. 
They use Levaloi technology and illusion hand axes for precision tool use, a mosaic evolution to modern day human. These were a nomadic people that drove the herds of animals, lived in seasonal camps, in caves, and vacation homes for sums of multiple family. They built ocean-faring rafts for travel and were first known to use throwing spears. To date, there have been no hyoid bone evidence in fossils to decipher a modern language ability. Homo sapien Neanderthalinus dating back about 130,000 to 35,000 years ago. Located in Europe during the climate shifts, its robust body was suited for the Ice Age. With its larger brain capacity and evidence of a hyoid bone for possible language capability, we see the evidence of advancement within family, culture, medicine and long-term care, musical instruments, tools and stone spears, settlements, and fire use. Within this culture, we also find the earliest known grave sites, dating back about 90,000 years ago, that resemble burial ceremonies. The significance of ritualistic burials suggests an afterlife, which indicates a religious aspect. Genetically, we find that the Neanderthalinus had 27 different mutations. Quite possibly the most controversial of the species, Homo sapien Neanderthalinus would have walked among other hominini species of its time. There are many theories predicting how hominini archaic humans had branched out and become extinct in different ways, but thanks to DNA testing and the theory of partial replacement model, where the disappearance of archaic humans could be due to both interbreeding and replacement, we find amounts of mysterious Neanderthalinus traits within some modern day humans, such as red hair, fair skin, and the FOXP2 gene for speech orientation. We can still wonder what they would have looked like today. Homo sapiens sapien, the anatomically modern-day man, the current reigning human species of planet Earth, but hopefully not the last in the evolutionary sequence. Dating back a mere 70,000 years ago, we are the only living species in the family of Hominidae. With bipedalism as the habitual and obligate mode of motion, there is no other animal on Earth that has much endurance as that of humans. Our lower limbs are elongated and the femur is angled inward and our knees can fully extend. Long distance walking on two feet is more energy efficient and we can withstand an endurance hunt with other animals. Our cognitive abilities are a result of dramatic increase in brain size, causing a taller forehead, which is good for long-term planning, and our forum and magnum is interior and sits under the skull. We have a greater dependency on vision, and thanks to the pyramidal mastoid process, we can hear other humans quite well on a shorter frequency. A prominent chin and smaller interior teeth help to support language skills. The spine is curved in two areas to keep the body centered, and the pelvis is bowl-shaped to support the organs, but childbirth has become difficult, causing breaks in the pelvis bone and quite often the tailbone breaking off. Originally the only species to migrate across the Bering Strait, we now overpopulate the world on every continent, and our actions now influence the environment globally. We are a social species, but still show basic signs of aggression similar to modern-day chimpanzees. Our kind has been adept to great advancements within a short amount of time, but we still have a long way to go humanitarianly and environmentally. We can only imagine what the future holds for our species. Through perseverance and determination, our lineage of human history has evolved from great apes to hunter-gatherers all the way up to modern-day man who have art, history, technology, science, agriculture, language, and beyond. This has been another adventure of AnthroQuest. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Munoz. We'll see you next time.